Hi, and welcome to another TechSong video. We're going to be following up on our work from last week, where we were working with the PyFace Digital, and we were also working with Python on the Raspberry Pi. This time, we're going to be using switches. Let's go ahead and begin. I'm starting the video on the PyFace Digital IO's documentation page, and this is very important, so I'll link to it in the video description. But you definitely want to have this in front of you when you're working on the PyFace Digital with Python, because this documentation is going to give you some of the insight that you need into the functions and the classes that are contained within the PyFace Digital IO module. So go ahead and check the video description to get that link so that you can have this in front of you when you work. Okay, to begin this exercise today, I'm actually going to start out in the TextMate text editor here on my Macintosh. You can use any sort of a text editor that you're comfortable with. You could even do this directly on the Raspberry Pi. But for the purposes of keeping this recording simple, I'm going to start here on my machine, and then I'm going to use this text editor and then upload the final script to my Raspberry Pi. That's just going to keep it simple for me as far as this recording is concerned, but you can do it any other way. You can, you know, you can compose it locally on your machine, or you can remote into the Raspberry Pi or work directly on the Raspberry Pi to write your script. It's totally up to you and what your comfort level is. That's what we're going to do here. So in our script, we're going to do two things. One is we're going to implement our event listener. We're going to implement the event listener, which is going to actually instruct the, the Pi face to do something specific when the button is pressed. And then second, we're going to actually write a function that gets invoked when the button gets pressed. Let's go ahead and write a little bit of code to get started. The first thing I need to do is I need to import the uh, Python module that I know I need to use, which is called PyFace Digital IO. Now to keep it simple, because I'm going to have to reference this module more than once, I'm going to give it an alias. I'm going to give it a really short alias, actually, of P. So by saying import PyFace Digital IO as P, I can reference that PyFace Digital IO module with just the simple single letter of P. Okay, and as I was saying, we know that we want to actually implement a specific function that's going to light up an LED. Now, in our case, what I'm going to do is I'm going to light up all of the LEDs. So every single LED, I'm going to light up when that first button is pressed. So we, we know that we are going to define a function. I'm going to call it light LEDs, and it's going to take a single argument of the event. So I'll define that here. And then I'm going to tab into it. Now, in Python, unlike what you've seen me do previously in JavaScript, uh, Python uses the indentation to indicate that you are inside of a function as opposed to curly braces. So we need to remember that and come back to this. We're going to implement this function later. So I'm going to leave this hash mark, which represents a code comment, and say, do this later. All right, I'll come out of there. I'll make sure I backspace to end that indentation, and that concludes the method for right now. So for right now, that function does nothing. So here's what I want to do. Just like in the last video, I want to get an instance of PyFace Digital. I want to get a single instance of it. That instance of PyFace Digital, uh, which is a, a class, represents the instance of the PyFace in your Raspberry Pi environment. So you only want to get this once. I'm going to create a reference variable called PyFace. And I'm going to set it equal to P. Remember, P is the alias for my PyFace Digital I.O. module. I'm going to say P dot PyFace Digital. So I'm instantiating a single instance of PyFace Digital. And now that I've got that, I can implement my listener. And here's how I'll do that. I'm going to set a variable. I'll call it listener. And I'm going to invoke uh, I'm sorry, I'm rather I'm going to create an instance of an input event listener. And here's how I'll do that. Again, I'll use my alias of P. And P, of course, that's my shortcut to getting a handle on the PyFace Digital I.O. module. I want to actually instantiate an instance of the input event listener. And I want to make sure that I pass it a value in its constructor. It takes a single argument called chip, which is actually an instance of the pie face. So I'll do that, and that actually gets me an instantiated instance of the input event listener. But I need to do a little bit of work to actually activate this. So the first thing I want to do is I want to invoke a method on the listener called register. 
register is a function on an instance of that class. It takes three arguments. So let me go ahead and put in my parentheses and we'll explain each of these arguments. It takes three arguments altogether. The first one is which switch are we going to put this listener on? I've got four switches on the pie face. I'm going to make use of the first one. And because these are represented in the form of an array, if I'm going to get a handle on the first one and an array starts with a zero index, then I'm going to make sure I say zero. Now, if I wanted the second switch, then I would make sure I did one. If I wanted the third, I would do two, etc. I think you get the idea. Now, the second is exactly what are we registering this event on? Now, we know it's the switch, but what happens in the switch? Well, there's two states of the switch, and that's the, when you're actually pressing down on the switch or when your finger is coming off of the switch. In our case, we want to actually set this event to take place when your finger is going down on the switch, and that's actually referenced by this uh, convenience variable on PyFace Digital I.O., which we're aliasing as P, and that's called IODIR underscore falling underscore edge. So what that means is we're registering this event listener when the first switch is being pressed downward. And then the last is what event actually takes place when this, or what activity takes place when this event happens. So when switch number one actually has that falling edge event, meaning it's being pressed, what function takes place? Now, if you look up here, I've started to define a function called light LEDs. And that's what we want to reference right here, light LEDs. And then that's it. We go ahead and we terminate that. And then the last thing that we need to do is once we've actually defined this event listener, we need to turn it on. And we do that by saying activate. So the last thing that we actually need to do is we need to go back up here and revisit our function and say, okay, so what do we need to do to turn on all of the LEDs on the pie face? So let's go ahead and erase this comment. So here's what I'm gonna do. I'm actually going to set a variable. We'll call it all underscore LEDs. And I'm going to set that to an array of zero to seven. So let's do this. We'll say range zero, seven. So before I get too deeply into this, let me just caution you. I am not a Python expert. I'm very new to Python. So doing things like this, I, I may stumble here and there. So I do want to make sure that you understand that what we're doing here is we're just sort of exercising Python on the Raspberry Pi and interfacing the Pi face. Don't look at this tutorial as being something that's going to teach you Python, because frankly, I'm just not qualified to teach you that. I'm kind of going along and sort of feeling my way through this. So let's go ahead then. We've got this array. This represents a range. And what we're going to do is we're going to iterate over this array. So the syntax for that in Python is four. We set a variable that represents the index. So we'll call that my LED in all underscore LEDs. And we indent in. We're not using curly braces because we are in Python. And what I'll do is I'll say event chip because we want to actually get a handle on the LEDs and the LEDs are an array so what we're going to do is we're going to open up that square bracket and we're going to say where are we in the LED in the LEDs array we are at my underscore LED that represents the index that we're currently in as we're iterating over these arrays and remember we're iterating over 0 through 7 and then we'll say toggle so what we're doing is we're saying get each and every one of the LEDs on the pie face and toggle it. Now, as I'm looking at this, I think that I might be making an error. Let me go back up here to range, and I'm going to change this 0, 7 to 0, 8. And let me explain to you why it is I'm doing that. Now, of course, I'm just speculating here, but I think that the last element in your range method is actually excluded from the actual array that's produced. The first element, 0, is included but the last element A is excluded. So I think you actually have to do this to get an array of zero through seven, and that's what we want. We have eight LEDs on the pie face, and we want to iterate over all of them, which means since we're working with an array of LEDs and an array has a zero index, we want to go from zero to seven. 
And I think that's how we do that. So this concludes this function of light LEDs. Okay, let me go ahead and add one more thing. I do need to make sure that we have some sort of a method that keeps this script sort of running and resident in memory. And this is where I think my, my lack of familiarity with Python is sort of going to be my weak point in this tutorial. Um, here's what I am going to try. I am going to say while true, go ahead and really basically do nothing, honestly. Um, we're just going to keep the script alive. So I'll do something like, you know, set a dummy variable equal to zero. Basically what I'm doing is I'm saying, okay, I've defined my event listener. I have defined the actual method that's going to take place when the event takes place, but I need to keep this script alive in order for this to happen. So I've got this sort of um, looping situation that's going to continue while true, which is going to be always, and it's basically going to set a dummy variable. This is going to keep the script running on the Raspberry Pi. This is probably not ideal. It's just really going to let me get this on the Raspberry Pi and working so that I can demonstrate things. So let me go ahead now and save this as my final process. I'll go ahead, I'll FTP this into the Raspberry Pi, and that way we can uh, we can test it out. So let's go ahead and do that now. Okay, now that I'm logged into the Pi, let's go ahead and see if we can start up this script. Okay, and with that running, let's go ahead and take a look at the Pi and see what we've got. Okay, so switch number one is the one that I've got my thumb on right here. So if I press this switch, I see all of the LEDs come on because we are using the toggle function. If I push that button again, then they all turn off, which is exactly what we're going for. So I'd call that a success. I could probably use some uh, improvements on my execution of Python, but I'm sure that's going to come in time as I learn the language a little bit more. Thank you so much for watching this video. Uh, I do appreciate it. If you like this video, please make sure you drop a like on that one for me. And of course, be sure to subscribe. I've got plenty more coming. Thank you again for watching, and I'll see you all in the next video.